We'll take a, a few more minutes and talk about the Russia. And then I'm going to hand the mic over. This is one of my favorite teachings, by the way. The Russia, the wicked son, what does he say? You'll notice that the, the Russia and the Chacham, they're not that far apart. They basically ask the same question. You know, what's going on over here? But let's just read it from the Haggadah. The wicked son, what does he say? What is this service to you? By saying to you, he implies, but not to himself. Since he excludes himself from the people at large, he denies the foundation of our faith. Therefore, you should blunt his teeth and tell him, it is because of this that God acted on my behalf when I went out of Egypt, on my behalf, but not on yours. Had he been there, he would not have been redeemed. You guys all heard that, right? Can I get a hands up? Do we hear that? Okay. The Russia. He's called the Russia. That's his name. He's okay. There's the Russia. He shows up to the Seder table. He has the humility to go against everything that's bothering him about this Judaism, about this, this tribe of his. But he makes it to the Seder. He makes it to the Seder. He humbles himself. He's there for mom and dad. He's there for Bubby and Zadie. Whatever his reasons that got him to the Seder, he's there. But he's the Russia. And he asks a question not much different than the Chacham. And how do we treat him? What's our response to him? Blunt his teeth. Really nice. We didn't, we're not even holding the second cup, and we're already blunting his teeth. And we tell him worse, that if you, you were there, you wouldn't be redeemed. That's the way to treat someone at your Seder table. This is the way we're supposed to act. This is, this is how we're supposed to show expression to someone who pushes himself and joins us. Obviously, like most things in the Haggadah and most things in Judaism, it needs commentary, it needs explanation. So here's one. When the Russia says what's going on here tonight, tonight, and we say knock out his teeth, what we're saying is to defang him, to take away the mouthpiece by answering him the questions so he has nothing to ask anymore. There's no teeth left, so to speak, symbolically, to ask another question because you're going to take the time to answer every single question he has till he has, so to speak, no mouthpiece left to ask another question. It behooves us to look at the glass half full in everything we study and learn and what's the betterment for our brothers and sisters. The Rush may be the most highest decorated member of the four children that comes to the Seder table. And so we still have an issue. It says, it is because of this that God took us out of Egypt, this by saying this, he said, had he been there, he would not be redeemed. You're saying this in front of him. So how do we, how do we, how do we handle that one? So it goes like this. We say, had he been there based on his moxie, his chutzpah, he would not have been redeemed. But since he's here already, 3,300 years later of questions, he shows up at the Seder table, of course he'd be redeemed. If we were in Egypt and he had these questions and he was upset, fine, had he been there, he would not have been redeemed. There were Jews that didn't want to follow Moses. Sadly, they were not redeemed. They were, they were stuck in Egypt. But 3,300 years later, he's still showing up to the Seder, the Russia, no less, big tag on his, on his lapel. I'm the Russia. And he's sitting at the Seder and he's having wine, he's having matzah. Of course he'd be redeemed. So answer him all the questions. Make sure he understands that, of course, he'd be redeemed. It's a whole different approach to the Seder table in terms of how we look at both the Chacham, the Russia. And I'll conclude our with one more minute. Today was the 11th of Nisan, which is the birthday of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, my leader and mentor. And the Rebbe added a very, very famous one. I'm not sure the origin of this. Could be his, could be others, but he plugged it very, very much. He said there's a fifth son. There's a fifth son. How come he's not in the, in the Haggadah? So the Rebbe explains because he didn't make it to the Seder. The Chacham made it to the Seder. But there is a fifth son, ladies and gentlemen, and a fifth daughter who's sadly not going to be at the Seder table this year or last year. And that's why they're not in the Haggadah. And we need to do everything we can. As you know, I'm committed to this full time together with my wife Shifra to do whatever we can to make sure that the fifth child should know that they're wanted and they're needed at the Seder table. I encourage you all with two days left, if you know someone that doesn't have a Seder, 
I know it's strange times and it's hard to invite people over, but maybe you can encourage them to join a Seder, even if it's by themselves, but to have Shemur Matzah so they can feel what we're all going to feel because we're preparing ourselves for the Seder to feel free, not just now, but forever. And may we talk of merit to be the Shana Habab Yerushalayim together with Mashiach and wishing you all a happy and kosher Passover.